Our next and final speaker for this session is Sarah Azubi, who is a consensus researcher here at Protocol Labs. Sarah will be discussing uh, securing membership and state checkpoints of BFT and proof of stake blockchains by anchoring onto the Bitcoin blockchain. Sarah? Thank you for the intro. Uh, hello, everyone. So yeah, I'm going to present a project that we are working on at Consensus Lab. Let me start by giving some motivation behind the project. The main motivation is that blockchains that are based on a reusable resource, uh, such as proof of stake or proof of space, proof of storage, they, are, um, they provide less security than those based on proof of work. We know this because there are a lot of attacks that have been discussed widely in the, in the community. So for example, the uh, long range attacks, stake bleeding attacks, uh, there's also grinding. So generally people, um, it's quite intuitive that this type of blockchain are less secure than the, uh, than the proof of work blockchain. And um, also similar attacks as long range attack and stake bidding attacks also exist in the proof of space setting. So just to make sure that we are all on the same page, I'm gonna illustrate what is a long range attack. So um, the idea behind the long range attack is that we have a set of validators that are responsible for maintaining the proof of stake chain. Um, but after some time, this validator, they will leave the system and other validators will take over. That's like a um, natural, like dynamic uh, committee, committee thing. So for example, in my slide, we start with the green validators and then later on, uh, we move to the pink validator. What can happen is that an adversary will be able to corrupt the past keys, so the green keys. And the idea is like these keys, at the present moment, they have no values because um, you know all the money that was associated with these keys, they have been transferred, they have been cashed out. So really like they are worthless. So the adversary could get them for nothing. And what's problematic in the proof of stake setting is that creating a block um, is costless and instantaneous. So with these keys, the green keys, the adversary could just like rewrite the entire history of the blockchain. And for example, the adversary could also like simulate a change of committee, like, um, you know, end up with like an orange committee. So uh, we can see that these attacks are very problematic because if we have some user Alice that has been offline for a long time, she will wake up, come back online, and she will see those two chains that looks both perfectly valid. And there's no way of telling which one is the right one because they both look perf perfectly legitimate. Another type of attack that I'm going to mention uh, quite quickly are power bleeding attack or stake ble bleeding attack in the context of uh, proof of stake. And uh, in this case, the idea is that with each block that is minted, there are going to be new coins that uh, that are going to be created. So which, sorry, which is block, each block that is created, new coins are going to be minted. And uh, the adversary will be, if the adversary create a, a private chain, an alternative chain, then all the rewards are going to come to itself. And the adversary will be able to use this as its advantage to also be able to create a very long chain. This was uh, originally proposed by this paper by Peter Gazi and his co-author. Um, so yeah, so that's just to mention uh, two attacks in a uh, two series attack in the proof of stake uh, setting. So one solution that has been widely discussed in order to solve this attack, um, as the name of this session suggests, is checkpointing. So there have been uh, many papers proposed. Uh, each proposed different setting, different efficiency, security uh, guarantees, and assumption. And in our case, for this project, we are going to focus on this paper that is called uh, BMS, and that it was actually uh, co-written by uh, Marco and his co-author from IBM. Okay, so now let me uh, start by presenting the intuition behind the solution. The intuition is to rely on a blockchain that is based on a burnable re resource in order to secure the underlying proof of stake blockchain. So for example, um, the idea would be to rely on a proof of work blockchains blockchain, which does not suffer from the common attack that I have discussed. So what would happen is that we would anchor the uh, proof of state membership and chain point into the Bitcoin blockchain. So basically, this is what uh, this will look like. 
uh, you can think that periodically there are going to be some blocks that are checkpointing. So the checkpoint is sent and uh, included in the Bitcoin blockchain. And we can assume that the checkpoint is going to contain the state of the chain as well as the memberships membership of the proof of stake system. So this is um, like the idea is like here, the, the Bitcoin blockchain will, will really serve as a source of truth, right? Because it's not vulnerable to long range attack. So ev everyone will be able to check the checkpoint on the Bitcoin blockchain. Very quickly, I'm going to mention that in the BMS paper uh, that I've mentioned previously, they do this uh, model on Ethereum which actually doesn't really work, uh, will not work in the future because Ethereum is planning to move to proof of stake and proof of stake are vulnerable to attacks. So basically this project consists in adapting this BMS paper in the Bitcoin city. So how do we do this? How do we do this uh, checkpointing into the Bitcoin blockchain? And one of the main questions that um, we, we, we can ask is how, uh, who pushes the transaction, right? Because uh, we need to ensure that um, the checkpoint is valid. Not everyone can just say, oh, this is the checkpoint, obviously. And also we want it to be decentralized. We don't want to have like one party that just um, update the checkpoint, you know, like for example, the developers of the proof of stake, because that's not like decentralized enough. And, um, and we want to, to have a decentralized solution. So um, spoiler alert, we're gonna use a threshold signing in order to do this checkpointing. And so the checkpointing is going to be um, done by the current validator. So the current members of the proof of stake system. So let me again uh, illustrate the, the solution. First, we're going to have an aggregated public key, PKI, that's going to be um, associated with the set of uh, validators of the, of the proof of stake blockchain at that time. So we call that set like the configuration and, for example, configuration I. And then what's going to happen is that this aggregated uh, public key is going to be the one that like, controls the checkpoint. And so the transaction in the Bitcoin blockchain will come from this public key and will include the checkpoint in the form of an opcode that's um, a detail, but basically it will include the checkpoint. And also on top of including the checkpoint, this transaction will send all of its amounts to a new public key, PKI plus one. And this new public key, it is meant to be controlled by the next set of validators. So basically this is how the change of a membership is updated on the blockchain. We go from one aggregate, aggregated key to the other. So the transaction will need to be signed by at least F plus one um, mi miners, uh, where F is the you know, a number of adversaries. So this is obvious because we don't want uh, an adversary to be able to, to, to push a, a, a fake uh, checkpoint. We are going to um, leverage the taproot upgrade that is coming to Bitcoin in November. And so we are going to use Schnorr threshold signature in order to do this. So again, let me illustrate this. So here we see that uh, the configuration I minus one will um, update the public key on the Bitcoin blockchain from PKI minus one to PKI. And then uh, later on, the new configuration CI will do again the update from PKI to PKI plus one, such that you know really we are rolling and, um, and the current configuration is in charge of pushing the checkpoint. The idea is like now, if we go back to the long range attack, Alex, Alice, she will see those uh, two chains. And what she's going to do in that case is she can go to the uh, Bitcoin blockchain and then she can, assuming that she knows PK0, um, she can just uh, follow the chain of transaction, find PKI, then she will have access to the, uh, to the um, checkpoint. Like PKI is also uh, a way to identify who are the right a validator. So basically using PKI, she can uh, decide is it the pink chain or is it the orange chain that is the correct one. In fact, we actually do even more than this. What we do is that we can, on top of this, use a decentralized storage service such as IPFS or Filecoin that is going to keep the, all the information about the configuration such that uh, basically Alice can just use the checkpoints to, to recover all the information about the, the current members of the proof of stake system. And so she knows where, where to ask uh, for, the, for the right chain. Now let's get to the high level protocol. So we assume that the protocol is gonna be triggered uh, periodically. 
for example, you know, once a day or, um, you know, after, after some events. And uh, then first, what we need to do is that we need the new members, so the, the, the members that are in the new configuration to create their key PKI plus one. So what's going to happen is that we're going to have a distributed key generation algorithm in order to uh, first determine this key. Then we're going to elect one participant to create the transaction from PKI to PKI plus one and also include the checkpoint. Um, and then we're going to have the uh, threshold signing protocol that needs to take place. And at, at the end of this uh, threshold signing protocol, the transaction is signed and the leader can send the transaction to the Bitcoin blockchain. So that's the high level um, hiding behind the protocol. One big question um, when we see this protocol is um, what, what first of all signature uh, scheme should we use? Uh, there are many of them. There exists some multi-sig, some threshold sig uh, that gave, give different warranties, have different properties. So for now, we have chosen Frost, which is quite a new uh, new protocol that was uh, proposed for um, efficient Schnorr threshold signature. So the idea behind Frost is that it's optimally efficient. So assuming that um, nothing bad happens, then the protocol is quite efficient. However, it also has the drawback of not being robust. So if we have one participant that misbehave or that abort, then the protocol cannot complete. However, misbehavior is detectable. So what will happen in this case is that we will remove the misbehaving participants and start again. So as you can see, this is not the most scalable uh, threshold signing scheme. So some ideas in order to help the scalability, because really if we are thinking about proof of stake system or proof of space system, uh, there could be like thousand, thousands of nodes. So what we could do is like um, pseudo randomly elect a subset of nodes to do the, to do the signing instead of having everyone do it. Uh, this is an idea that was first presented in Algorand. There's also a paper called Mithril that presents a, a threshold signing that uses this trick. Uh, so one thing that we are limited by is that we want our threshold signing scheme to be Bitcoin compatible. So for example, now there are a lot of threshold signing that use BLS that are uh, very scalable, but to us they are useless because we cannot um, you know, publish the transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain. Bitcoin doesn't uh, recognize uh, BLS basically only on each door. So basically, this is a work in progress. So we we are happy, you know, there's a QA just after. So we are really happy to, to discuss this with you. Um, so just to conclude, this is the end. Uh, the idea of th this project is to anchor a proof of stake of proof of stake checkpoint to the Bitcoin uh, blockchain to use threshold signature and to leverage taproot. We are thinking about using sampling to help with uh, scalability. And uh, we are really happy to hear your ideas. If you know schemes, uh, signing schemes that are good to use, uh, feel free to reach out to me. And, uh, and I think, and yeah, there's my email address and my Twitter. So feel free to reach out to me. And I'm looking forward to the Q&A. Thank you.